Hello, welcome to part two of our Beginner's 3D Animation course. This is Michael. So in this video we're going to talk about what is 3D animation, especially in Maya. Animation is the movement of anything, really. Just you walking across the room is you animating across the room. The term animation in general is just movement. So in 3D animation you are moving objects. Pretty simple to understand, but it actually can be pretty complex. But this is the beginner animation, you have to start somewhere. So we're going to be just getting our feet wet, we're getting into the kiddie pool, so to speak, and learning how 3D animation works. And as we talked about in the previous video, we have frames within our timeline. And all of these different points on this line is a point in time. If you think of the beginning of the time slider as the beginning of time and the end of the time slider as the end of time then everything in between is time passing from one point to another. So starting at frame 1 you hit play time passes from frame 1 all the way through frame 150 in this case and then it repeats. So we're going to be moving things from point A to B to C to D to E and so on within our timeline and every time you move something you are setting a keyframe. So what are keyframes versus frames? So we have frames, every point along this time slider is a frame, and, but then you have keyframes. They're key as in core or important frames. If you think about traditional animation, especially back in the old days when things were done by hand, uh, you have you know Disney's Snow White and other such 2D animation uh, films and projects, they had scores of people actually animating these movies. So one person would be in charge of a single aspect of the film. For example, you'd have an animator animating a certain character, and every time that character would be in the film, that animator would animate them to uh, make that animation consistent throughout the film. Sometimes you'd have, depending on the project, you know, it's, it varies, you know, from project to project, but you'd have two different positions. You have the keyframer and then the in-betweener. So a keyframer would animate the key frames or the key poses of a character, for example, in a sequence. So they'd, they'd animate, for example, from frame one, they'd animate, they would draw that frame. And then they might draw frame 20 as the pose changes over time. And then they might switch over to frame 45 as the pose changes. And they would do these key poses or key frames along the sequence. And then someone else would come in, see, okay, I have this drawing at frame 1, and then I have a drawing over here at frame 30. So I need to make frame 1's drawing merge or blend or interpolate into the drawing at frame 30 in a motion. So let's say the character in frame one, well actually let's just do something visual here. Let's create, let's go to create polygon primitives and just make a sphere. So here's my sphere. I'll just move it over here. So let's say we have a sphere over here on this side of the grid at frame one. Well then at frame 30 we have a sphere over here on this side of the grid. So whenever we are given our two frames, our frame 30 frame and our frame 1 frame, our job as an in-betweener is to then do each frame along the way between frame 1 and frame 30. So we're drawing the sphere, you know, 28 more times along this path so that frame 1 to frame 30 blend back and forth like this seamlessly. So they had two different people doing these things. For example, they'd had the keyframer doing frame 1 and frame 30, and then the in-betweeners, sometimes more than one person, doing all the drawings in between. Usually the in-betweeners would be someone who's less experienced than the keyframer, and they're getting their feet wet in the animation industry at the time, and so their job was to be an in-betweener as opposed to a keyframer, which they're working and aspiring to be. So. How does that translate to Maya and 3D animation? Well now, with the power of Maya's uh, interpolation of keyframes, you, as the animator, are the keyframer. You're going to set a key here, 
at frame one, and I'll just do it uh, as an example. You don't have to follow along with me or anything. So I'll set a key there at frame one. You see my little red line here on the time slider that indicates a keyframe has been placed. So I've set a key at frame one for the sphere to be on this side of the grid. And then I go over here to frame 30, and see what I say, you know what, at frame 30, I want the sphere over here. I'm going to set another keyframe. And so I have these two keyframes on my time slider. And so now you have done your job. You've done your keyframes. And now Maya will interpolate the frames between frame 1 and 30 for you. So Maya itself has the lowly position of in-betweener doing all these in-between frames for you while you, the animator, the key framer, are setting the key frames of the animation. So then it's your job to make sure that Maya is interpolating those keys correctly. And that's where more of the nitty gritty aspects of 3D animation come in. You set the keyframes and then you go back and adjust how those keyframes blend together to create the full animation. So keyframes are the keys we set at different points along the timeline and while frames are each and every one of these. So you have your keyframes in this example set at frame 1 and 30 and then all the rest all of them are frames keyframes and frames. So the term interpolation is just a way of saying blending or moving between between frame 1 and frame 30 the sphere is interpolating or blending or moving between those two keyframes. So we're interpolating our keyframes within Maya. We're blending them together. They're moving from point A to point B with our keyframes that are set. So again, I want to uh, show an example of interpolating between frames. And I, now I, I don't need you to necessarily follow along yet. I'm still kind of introducing these concepts to you. Make sure you understand whenever we get to them in future videos, you can remember, oh yeah, this is what interpolation means. So right now, the ball or the sphere is interpolating between frame 1 and 30 in a straight line. You see the ball just kind of goes from one point to the other point between those two keyframes that I set. But let's say I want to change the interpolation between those two keyframes so the ball does something different between those two frames. I can set a third frame in between, which would be an, another keyframe saying that actually instead of the ball just going from point A to point B let's have a point B be in the middle so it goes from point A to point B and then to point C so let's say point B here at frame 15 let's say I move the ball up here and I set a keyframe there now so now I have a new red line between my first two keyframes a new keyframe so I go back to frame 1 and now I can click and drag along the time slider you see now my ball moves up to frame 15 and then down to frame 30. So Maya will change the path of the object that you're setting keyframes for by changing the interpolation between points to make those keyframes blend together. So that's one way of changing the interpolation or changing the blending between two points by setting a simply a third or another keyframe and making the blend go from that point or point A to point B and then the point C if you wanted this arcing motion to happen. Now I'm going to delete this keyframe and in a future video, actually in the next video, I'll be showing you how to delete and edit and create keyframes on here. It's actually quite simple, just right click on that frame and hit delete and it deletes it. So I have these two keyframes again going from A to B in a straight line. I'm going to open up an editor. If we go to Windows, Animation Editors, graph editor. So this is the graph editor and I'm going to get into this in more detail soon. I just want to kind of show you what happens when I change the, the way Maya interpolates the ball moving. So with the sphere selected I'm moving the sphere along the x-axis which is usually displayed as a red color x-axis. So you see I have this red curve here if I select it and press F, it frames it in view. So I can choose the Translate X channel here in the Graph Editor's uh, channel view here and show that path as it is interpolated by Maya. So I have frame 1 and frame 30. And again, try not to be too confused by what I'm showing you. I'm simply wanting to 
discuss interpolating between points and I'll get into the graph editor as a tool in the next video. So what Maya is doing is it's kind of smoothing the path between these two points. I can adjust the path that Maya uses to interpolate these points just by grabbing these curves and changing them. So I'm changing how Maya is doing its in-betweening work. For example, using that uh, vernacular from the old 2D animation world, the in-betweening is changing based on this curve. So if I minimize this and scrub between these two things, you can see now at frame one, the ball's moving back and then moves back forward. And that's without setting a new keyframe. I don't have a keyframe set saying, hey, move the ball backwards first and then forwards. I don't have a keyframe saying that. I'm simply changing that interpolation path between the two keyframes. That's, so that's getting into the kind of the next step, but I wanted to show you how even without adding a, a third keyframe, you can change how Maya interpolates objects. So yes, keyframing, and Maya does all the in-between work, and then you will then adjust how Maya interpolates, how Maya does the in-between work between your keyframes to make your 3D animation come to life. So in the next part, we're going to go into more detail on how to actually create these keyframes that I'm showing you, how to edit them. We're going to bring back Graph Editor and talk about how to edit these paths that I showed you here. These are animation curves, by the way. We'll get into that in more detail in the next part. And we're going to go into this. We're going to get into how animation works. And then, after we kind of get that concrete foundation of under our feet and how these tools work and how to use them, we'll start doing some simple animations and understanding 3D animation in Maya. I hope you'll join us as we continue in our beginner's course. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.